This is something I saw on, on TV, on YouTube, where uh, they'd made what they call the perfect steak, and I tried it, and I really liked it. Who I am is Butch Milbrandt. What I do for a living is grow grapes, oversee the winery. The cooking part is a release. To be able to prepare a dish and people enjoy it. My second passion is aviation. My third passion is motorcycles. If you check the oven, I could smell I your do need to, I need to check that, excuse me. <laughs> Well, I like the fact that it, it finishes medium rare all the way through. You have just a very thin crust on both sides, you know, that has that char and that crispness and the salt and pepper, and then all the way through it's medium rare. It's not like crisp and then brown and then gray and then pinker and then red. It's just all red. I did buy some nice steak because that's what it takes to uh, make good steak is good steak, and so some nice New Yorks. This is a gift from a friend of mine. It's called a flesh hook. It's pretty handy for turning meat. What we're gonna do is roast it off in the oven to about 120, 125 degrees internal temperature. And then we'll bring it out, let it rest for 20, 30 minutes until it comes kind of down to room temperature. And then we will slap it on the grill. Okay, so we're gonna pour a little wine and uh, get started with this preparation. The Brothers Blend is a little softer, more supple, round, more approachable and easy to drink. So here's to us. We're simply gonna salt and pepper this. Everything seems to be simple these days, so we're just gonna salt, because it's gonna make it a little more crispy. You're gonna get a better crust on it. And then some, a good amount of ground black pepper. And I'm just gonna press that down a little bit so make sure it stays with the meat. So we turn these pieces over and repeat. One full amount of salt. Here we go again, so we'll place these on a rack, so any juices that come out will not just stay with the meat, they'll drop through. And we'll slip it in a 275 degree oven. And you need to watch it, but we're thinking maybe 30 to 40 minutes. It'll be nice and juicy on the inside, and, but still not cooked on the outside. To accompany that steak, we're gonna have some uh, sauteed onions and some sauteed mushrooms. That always goes good with steak, so we'll get started on that little preparation. I've already uh, sliced the mushrooms. They're ready to go in the pan. There, so that should be enough for the four of us, and uh, we'll have the mushroom as well. To the mushroom pan, we're gonna add some butter and about the same thing to the onion pan. And then also we'll add some uh, olive oil. Mushrooms soak up a lot of oil. And, and onions do as well. And mix these around so they get a little oil on everything. And then some salt and pepper. Now we'll put the mushrooms in. And I like to shake them right away, otherwise the ones on the bottom will get all the oil. Everybody gets a chance to get in the bath here. Now a little salt again. And some pepper. What do we ever do without these two spices? So we'll just, we'll have to watch these as they cook because they're on a, they're, they're on a temperature where they will burn if you just, if you ignore them. So we need to keep an eye on them. We want to get a little brown tint on them. They're a little more flavorful then. And the onions, we want them truly brown. Along with the steak, we're gonna have red potatoes. So we will cut up a bunch of these. You know, you can cut them any which direction. You can either, if you're gonna hold them for a while, you can either put them in water so they don't brown or put some oil on them, a little salt, pepper again. Give them a toss, they get well coated in oil. We're gonna cook these on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna put the cookie sheet in the oven first and get it, bring it up to temperature. So when the potatoes go on it, they're kind of like start searing right away. We'll put it in here with the steaks. With the potatoes, we're gonna have onions and peppers roasting all together. But we're gonna actually start the potatoes probably 20 minutes before we put the peppers in. Yeah, and they're sizzling a little. I'm trying to break them up so that they all get apart from each other. In the oven they go. And we'll give those about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll add the peppers and onions to it. So you see the onions are getting a little brown, and the mushrooms are starting to come down, getting some brown notes on them as well. So this evening with this steak, we're gonna try a couple of wines. We're gonna try our Brothers Blend, which goes well with most any meat. And then as we get into the meal, and we really sit down and get prepared to eat this thing, we're gonna ramp it up with some Malbec from our Estates series of wines. So I think you're gonna like it a lot.
meat in Malbec, that should be a perfect pairing. It's time to check the steak and uh, maybe check the wine, see if it's still good. Mmm, I like it. And just inside that steak, it says it's 125. And this one is 128. So I think they're ready to come out of there. So these don't look too much different than when they went in. The fat has started to render just a little bit, but the meat is still kind of a maroon color. I'll put some foil over this, and then we'll let them rest. Ultimately, you're gonna want the mushrooms and the onions on top of the steak together. So brought them together, and they're just under, they're on a low heat just to hold them. Okay, so we're gonna bring the potatoes out now and add the peppers and onions to it. It's better just to do them two different, two different timings. I'll just put those on there. That's gonna be pretty. The sun has set. Okay, we got the grill nice and hot. Let's see if we can get these things do a little sizzling for us. So I'm gonna grill them in this position for about 30 seconds and then turn them a, a half a turn so they get the cross marks on them so they look like they were professionally done instead of done on the farm. We can get inflamed. Yeah. Looks kind of semi-professional, doesn't it? Well, everybody got their fingers crossed? It's gonna be the perfect steak? We'll see what happens. And I think that should do it. So we're gonna plate this salad. Dijon mustard dressing in there, heirloom tomato, some black olives, nice goat cheese, a little red onion, and put some lemon peel in it. Look how pretty that is. Okay, these are pretty close. So we'll go ahead and plate them up. I don't know, but those look pretty perfect. We'll see. The perfect is on the inside. That looks pretty perfect, doesn't it? That's nice, medium rare. A little crust on the outside, medium rare all the way through. No brown, gray, pink, red. I think we'll eat it. Then we'll just add some colorful veggies to the plate. Now we'll get a little uh, onions and mushrooms on top of that steak. I think that'll do it. That work. Outside, um, you have to think about the little bit of breeze if you're in the evening wanting to use candles. Nowadays, there's so many fun imitation candles, you might say, that even have little wickers. We've had somebody try and blow one out before. <laughs> there might have been a little too much wine involved, too, but. <laughs> I was going to go down to the garden and get some lavender and some rosemary and just kind of use some of the herbs and maybe even some sage in this little tiny vase. Stuff that you have growing out in the yard. Some of these things you can dress up and dress down. So I put some burlap with some really quite formal napkins and it was really fun. I like it on this side. You know, it's something you have to time it fairly well and, and you have to pick the right day because it's in the evening sun. As soon as the sun sets, you're out there, food prepared on the table. You got about an hour there, it's just beautiful twilight. It's a great place to have dinner. Here's to the beautiful evening. And the beautiful table, this is lovely, dear. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.